The formula for serialization delay is the frame size in bytes. We take that and multiply it by 8 to convert bytes to bits, and we divide by the link speed. And here's the way I like to do the units of measure. I know that my serialization delay is probably going to be spoken of in terms of milliseconds. And my link speed is probably going to be given in terms of kilobits per second. So yes, while you could use seconds as your serialization delay and have something like 0 .090 seconds, I prefer to think of 90 milliseconds. And your link speed, even though you could do that in bits per second, and say the link speed is 128,000, the units of measure work out really nicely if you just use kilobits per second for your link speed. That's going to give you your serialization delay in terms of milliseconds. Let's take a look at an example. In this example, we're saying that we have a frame size of 1,500 bytes, the MTU size on most Cisco router interfaces. We're also told that the link speed is 128 kilobits per second. Let's crunch those numbers. What sort of serialization delay does this result in? 1,500 times 8 divided by 128, that gives us 93.75 milliseconds, about 94 milliseconds of serialization delay. Are you picturing this? It takes about 94 milliseconds for the big web packet to get out of that router interface, and during that time, the voice packet is just sitting behind the web packet, twiddling its thumbs, waiting to get out of the interface. Mathematically, we're told that it takes about 94 milliseconds for that web packet to get out. I actually measured it. I recorded the audio using some audio recording software. Let me show you what I found. When I recorded this tone and then started loading the web traffic, you can see where we went from a solid tone to this Morse code-like behavior where the tone was breaking up at fairly regular intervals. I measured one of those intervals. Here's what it was. If we zoom in, and you can see that I highlighted the interval between a couple of those tones as the tone was breaking up, and we're told that it was about 95 milliseconds that period of time. Very close to what we calculated at about 94 milliseconds. That's the reason we're getting this breakup in our tone. Let's fix it. Let's see how we can configure link fragmentation and interleaving to give us a nice solid tone even in the presence of data. We need to configure this on both sides of this 128k link, on R2 and on R1. Let's begin on R2. On R2, let's go into global configuration mode, and let's create out of thin air a multi-link interface. Let's say interface multi-link, and we give it a locally significant number any number you want. I'll just say one. That's easy to remember. And we give a series of PPP multi-link commands. Let's say PPP multi-link and press enter. That by itself says do fragmentation. However, it's not quite perfect. It does fragmentation, but the fragments are too big by default. The default fragments result in a maximum serialization delay of 30 milliseconds. Here's Cisco's guideline. Cisco says that the sweet spot for serialization delay is anywhere from 10 through 15 milliseconds. If we could pick, we would probably say 10 milliseconds. However, 15 is acceptable. We need to change that maximum serialization delay that's going to be created by the fragmentation. And we need to say, do interleaving because PPP by itself does not do interleaving. It doesn't shuffle things together. So we need to give a couple of extra commands. Let's say PPP multi-link fragment delay, and in milliseconds we say what we want the maximum serialization delay to be. I'm going to say 10. Now let's say shuffle everything together with the command of PPP multi-link interleave. Something else we need to do with this virtual multi-link interface is assign it an IP address. Because logically, this is the interface that's going to be sending and receiving packets. Remember earlier, I said that we could do multi-link PPP over a single link? That's what we're going to do right now. Notice interface serial 0 slash 0. That's going to be our physical interface that's going to belong to what is referred to as a multi-link bundle. We can have a bundle of just one interface if we want. We said we had to have an IP address. We're going to steal the IP address from serial 0 slash 0. Let's say IP address 10.1.1.1 with a 24-bit subnet mask. 
And something else I've already done ahead of time, I configured LLQ, low latency queuing. That's another topic for another day. But I configured low latency queuing to make sure that voice had enough bandwidth. And that low latency queuing configuration is applied typically to an interface with a service hyphen policy command. And right now it's applied to serial 0 slash 0. I need to apply that policy to this new interface because logically it's this new interface that's going to be carrying the traffic. To do that we say service hyphen policy output it's in the outbound direction and I give the name of the service policy which is p hyphen output. Now we can go into our physical interface let's go into interface serial 0 slash 0 and say sorry you no longer have an IP address. Let's take away that IP address. But we do want this interface to belong to this multi-link group. We say PPP multi-link group 1. It's now a member of multi-link bundle 1. In fact, it's the only member. At this point, we do not have connectivity over to R1. We just broke that. Because if you configure MLP on one side of the link, you have to configure it on the other side of the link. Let's go over to router R1 and give a complementary configuration. On router R1, let's go through the same steps. Let's create a virtual multi-link interface. You can see by the error message that just popped up on screen that we just lost our registration with a gatekeeper, which was R2. And that's because we configured one side of the link, but we haven't yet configured the other side of the link for MLP. We're fixing that now, though. In interface configuration mode for multi-link 1, we say PPP multi-link, PPP multi-link fragment delay 10, PPP multi-link interleave, Let's give it an IP address. It's going to be the IP address of serial 0, 10.1.1.2, with a 24-bit subnet mask. No service policy applied here, by the way. Let's go into interface serial 0 and say, you no longer have an IP address, but you are a member of Multilink Group 1. At this point, connectivity should be restored between routers R1 and R2. In fact, let's see if we can ping across that link. Can I ping 10.1.1.1? I can. Let's now go back over to router R3. And before I do that, let's place the phone call again. From 2222, let's dial 1111. And let's get back over on router R3. Let's reissue that test command. And without the web traffic loading, we should have a nice solid tone, as we did before. Now in the background, I'm going to load that web page, and let's see how our voice quality sounds. The web page is loading. Let's listen. That is much better. We now have voice and data peacefully coexisting on a relatively slow speed WAN link only 128 kilobits per second. The way we were able to do that was to take those big data packets and bust them up. And like we were shuffling a deck of cards, we shuffled in the little tiny voice packets in amongst the now fragmented data packets, resulting in great voice quality. I certainly hope you've enjoyed this series of videos focusing on what I consider to be three of the more challenging uh, QoS concepts. Specifically, we talked about policing and shaping in the first video. In the second video, we talked about weighted random early detection. And now in this third and final video, we've discussed link fragmentation and interleaving. I've been asking for input on what you would like to see as the topic of future videos, and I've been getting some great feedback already trying to decide how we want to steer this in the future and what I can do that might benefit you the most. So I'm still pondering that. Please give me your feedback. Let me know what you would like to see in a series of videos or in some sort of a self-study product. And I'm sure I'll be posting something again in just a few days. And if you want to follow me, I'm on Facebook at Kevin Wallace Networking. You can fan that fan page. On Twitter, I'm K Wallace CCIE. And if you want to read my blog on Network World, it's nww.com slash community slash Wallace. Thanks again, and we'll see you shortly in one of those forums.